Hello, I'm Dr. Don Frazier, and I'm accompanied by Derek Hostis, and this is Historical Trends. Today, we will be discussing how liable college coaches should be for their own bad behavior and that of their student athletes. That's right. We will talk about how recent allegations and charges against players and coaches spark this question of responsibility. Makes sense. <laughs> So, Derek, along with this topic, well, because of this topic, let's start at Ohio State. What the heck happened with Urban Meyer? So, recently at the Ohio State University. The Ohio State University, not a Ohio State University. There were allegations of abuse against uh, Zach Smith, wide receivers coach, by his wife. The incident occurred in 2015, but wasn't released to the media until earlier this year in April. Along with Smith being fired, Urban Meyer was put on paid administrative leave. This means he was suspended completely from the team until the first week of the season. Hmm. Uh, He could not participate uh, in games, but in practice only. So that's what the suspension meant? Yes, sir. You can help him practice, but you can't be on the sideline during the game? Yes, sir. Okay. He was not able to to return to his normal coaching position until three weeks into the season, missing the crucial game between his fourth-ranked Buckeyes and and the 16th, ranked TCU Horn Frogs at Jerry's World. The then 16th ranked Horn Frogs. Cause yeah, not anymore. Uh, this in all reality did not affect the Buckeyes very much as they beat TCU 40 to 28, sadly. Go Frogs. <laughs> Knuckle up. All right. That almost impacted the Buckeyes as the game was close. Well, until the end, we all yeah. saw that train wreck. So, what else is there on this Smith investigation, and why did it take two years before it came out of the shadows? It's actually part of the reason why Meyer was suspended, because uh, he knew the incident back in 2015, and when asked about it at Big Big Ten Media Days, he said, my intention was uh, to not say anything inaccurate or misleading. That that Urban Meyer lied at Media Day, and let's just call it what it is. You know, he, he didn't – it wasn't that he couldn't remember or he had memory lapses. I mean, what other memory lapses did he have uh, in that press conference? So his receiver's coach is beating up his wife, and he wants to make sure that, you know, he doesn't get the story wrong. Yeah. I think it goes something like this. Stop hitting me. Stop hitting me. Okay. Go on. Uh, the irony behind this was that Smith's wife, Courtney Smith, went yes. to Meyer's wife, okay. uh, Shelly Meyer, about the incident. So – you. Know, Meyer had to have known about yeah, it, right? Clearly, I mean, your wife talks to you yeah. from time to time. Oh, yeah. And probably tells you stuff like, you know he's beating up his wife. Okay. But I don't want to say anything misleading. Yeah, I don't want to say anything <laughs> misleading because, you know, I might get it wrong that he's beating up his wife. All right. Also, this isn't even the first time this has happened. Is back in 2002, Smith was charged for domestic abuse and Meyer threatened to fire him then. So, same wife? So, Beat her up in 2002 and 2015. Sir. Wow. This incident came up during the media uproar as well. So, clearly this guy's got a pattern. So, Meyer must really like this guy if he hires him in 2001 and he didn't fire him from the first incident and then covers for him for the second incident. With two allegations like this, it would be hard for anyone to keep this a secret. We will discuss the rest of this incident and more on accountability from head coaches and players and coaches behaving badly right after this break. Don't skip! Don't skip! Don't skip! Hello, my name is Christopher Bartlett. I'm the studio manager with the McWinney History Education Group, and you may be used to seeing my name in the end credits, or sometimes you'll see me sitting here as a special guest host. But right now, I'm here to talk to you about an amazing new opportunity. We have created a Patreon! (laughs) To put it simply, if you enjoy the content on this YouTube channel, then you can head on over to Patreon, donate money to us, and become a patron. And through your donations, more content will be made. Basically, it breaks down like this. With $10, you will receive a short thank you video from Dr. Frazier and Dr. Fabrizio. With $25, you will be able to take part in a patron-only poll. With $50, you will get swag. 
These items include a choice between two prints of paintings and signed copies of Dr. Frazier's books, Blood on the Bayou and Thunder Across the Swamp. With $75, you will receive exclusive videos that will not be available anywhere else, not on YouTube and not on SoundCloud. These videos will be just for you, the patrons. With $100, your name will appear in the credits. See that right there? That's where your name can be. Finally, for $500, we will send you a signed collector's edition of Phil Collins' book, The Alamo and Beyond. Yes, it is signed by Phil Collins himself. And remember, for all the higher donations you do, you also get the stuff from the lower ones as well. So it's pretty cool. And when we reach our goal of $5,000, Dr. Frazier and Dr. Fabrizio will give you their own personal ranking of the presidents from worst to best. Coming from the perspective of a historian like Dr. Frazier and a political science expert like Dr. Fabrizio, you really don't want to miss their ranking and why they put them in that order. If you enjoy this content and want to see more, if you believe in our mission of making history accessible to everyone, then head on over to our Patreon and donate as much money as you're willing to give. You'll help us continue what we're doing, and you'll get amazing gifts as our way of saying thank you. Now we return to your regularly scheduled programming. And welcome back. All right, so we were talking about Ohio State. How did it all shake out? What are the final results or outcomes of this Ohio State ordeal? So to wrap this particular incident up, Smith believed that this was not a huge ordeal, as it would have not been a big deal if not for the media uproar. So me beating up my wife shouldn't be a big thing, except that somebody tattled on me in the media. Yeah, as, uh, as it went to the media, it became a big deal. Well, there's a lot of money involved here, too. I mean, Division One athletics is oh, like yeah. professional athletics, so, all right. Uh, he said he, he didn't think he deserved it, but it wasn't wrong for him to be fired. Didn't deserve it, but it wasn't wrong. Boy, that is some interesting language <laughs> lawyering. All right. He was also asked about the status of Urban Meyer, and Smith said that uh, it would be terrible and unjust for uh, Ohio State to fire him for something that he, Smith, had done. Well, okay. As justice had already been served. Just by being sus suspended? Or with him being fire fired, justice had been served. Gotcha, gotcha. So Smith being fired was justice enough? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Meyer was not only suspended for the actions of Smith, but for his cover-up as well. Okay, so he was guilty for being guilty, too. All right, so sounds like Smith was just sorry he got caught, <laughs> and Meyer was guilty because, well, he was covering for bad behavior. All right, that makes sense. Now, this can't be the only problem uh, like this that's happened over the years. I've heard of plenty of sexual assault incidents in the news involving college football mm -hmm. players, and my gosh, it goes all the way back to things like lacrosse players and oh, yeah. all, all sorts of uh, uh Collegiate athletics. It just always seems to be big in the big name sports. Well, it's because it's high profile. This definitely isn't the only one, as these type of allegations go back a few years. Yeah, yeah, back to boys and girls, I suspect. Yeah. Back in 1974, an incident occurred at the University of Notre Dame uh, when a young lady accused six football players of raping her. Uh, none of the player, or one of the players, was actually her boyfriend. She would be hospitalized and later spent a month in psychiatric care. Yikes. There were charges filed against the players that would later be dropped, and the girl and her parents decided not to press charges either. The players would later be suspended for a year for violating team rules. But the coaches were not involved and not held accountable. Okay. That was then. There were also incidents of false accusations. There was a major incident that happened 16 years later in 1990 at the University of Southern California. You know, USC. USC, got it. Uh, three football players were accused of sexual battery and false imprisonment of a female graduate student at the university. Wow. She stated that she was forced into one of the players' rooms and tied to the bed. It was later verified that none of this information was true, as none of the eyewitness stories matched the victims. Wait a second. So she made it all up. Yes, sir. So you've got one clear case where this girl had been raped, but then the parents didn't press charges. Mm -hmm. Then you have another incident at USC where she made the whole thing up. 
I mean, that sounds like the Duke lacrosse the player mm -hmm. incident later on. So how do you sort through facts from fiction and, you know, how do you make this kind mm -hmm. of a, uh, you know, where's justice in any of this? All right. So how many coaches were involved in these incidents and cover-ups and things like that? Because um, we're really talking about coaches being liable for the bad behavior of their mm -hmm. coaching staff and players. So these episodes are just a little context as I was leading up to one of the biggest incidents that occurred in 2015 at the University of Baylor. Ah, uh, you mean at Baylor, or University. Baylor University? Yeah, that's right. University of Baylor would be news to them. All right, so that was Art Browse and Company. Yes, sir. Uh, it all started with the recruitment and transfer of Sam U Ukawachi, okay. a defensive end from Boise State. Browse was told from Boise State coach Chris Peterson that Ukawachi was released to depression and team-related incidents. Uh, this was false as he was trouble, and, later, and that later came into clear view when he was charged with sexual assault of a soccer player before even playing a game with the university. Wow, he just figured it was his personal buffet. I guess so. Yikes. Uh, Brow's incredible resume was brought to a screeching halt as this incident was made public, and he was put on uh, suspension with intent to terminate. So Brow's was held liable for this transfer student coming in to play ball for him. Okay. Now, he was subsequently uh, fired, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, this is when we begin to see coaches either being punished for the actions of their players or we see them taking action. Okay. I'd be interested in the action that they're taking. So who determines <laughs> liability? And how do you determine liability? I mean, Bryles was thrown under the bus because he recruited this guy. Mm -hmm. All right. So in order to get our arms around this, let's go back to the Ohio State incident. Uh, with Urban Meyer and Smith mm -hmm. and all that. So how does this all work out? So to bring it to more of a more personal standpoint, yeah. I believe Urban Meyer shouldn't have been penalized. Okay. Because even though uh, it nearly helped my Horned Frogs beat them this season. <laughs> Not which, really. No. <laughs> they need to have a quarterback. Yeah. Although Meyer knew of the incident with Smith's spousal abuse, it wasn't his responsibility to take action against his fellow colleague. Uh, except really? Except for the fact that uh, something should have been said. Yeah, it's interesting because that kind of runs counter to a bunch of training that we all mm. receive at the university level. That if you know of an incident like that, you've mm. got to bring it out. But in interesting. Anyhow. All in all, we're all human and we make decisions. Sure. Uh, that most of the time we regret. Uh, <laughs> My gosh, you must make <laughs> terrible decisions. I make decisions every day. I don't, I don't regret most of them. But all right, I see your point. This plays into the fact that coaches have to make decisions, but they should not be forced to act or be involved with a legal incident that is with a player or coach. Hmm. Interesting troubled ground there, a little unsteady ground. All right, so let's take another break, and when we come back, we'll unpack this a little more. We'll be right back. When you support McWinney History Education Group, you also support the many young workers who operate and maintain the company's digital operations. These are dedicated university students who handle many things such as filming, recording, and editing content from McWinney, as well as cultivate the layout and structure of McWinney's various websites, including its associated channel on YouTube. We are a nonprofit organization that exists from donations from interested persons and history enthusiasts alike. Donations enable our students to obtain a higher education, job training, and career bolstering skills. If you would like to donate, please visit us at www.mcwinney.org and click on our About Us tab to learn more. All right, and welcome back. We're talking about coaches and players potentially behaving badly and who should be held liable and how this should all get unpacked. All right, so in regards to the accusations at Ohio State, would you say that the school, well, how would you say the school would be impacted by this whole Urban Meyer incident? So I would say, I mean, the co the school is really not going to be affected that much. No, I mean, it's going to go It's, it's, it's going to get some of a bad reputation, but for its previous and past reputation, players are still going to go there. And students will still enroll there. It's the oh, largest yeah. public university in the nation. Oh, yeah. And I don't, I really don't think the receivers coach being abusive of his wife enters into the average 18 year old's decision making process. Oh, no. They see the logo apparel at Walmart and say, I want to be a Buckeye. Oh, yeah. Yikes. So, 
What's the big? I mean, why do we even have these incidents brought into the media? So, I mean, it back then. I mean, like we discussed earlier, back way in, back then in the summer, yeah, <laughs> or 2015 or 2002. Yeah, I mean, the media wasn't that big of a deal, but in today's time, the media is it's an animal. Why is that? It's because everybody's on it. Well, why is that? I mean, why is it such an animal? I mean, why do you think it's so voracious? Because it's all over the news, and I mean, media's in every corner. Every corner, 24-7, man. It's around. Especially at D1 schools. All the time. Oh, and yeah. and they're milking that beast. I mean, it may be a beast, but they sure like the product of it. Oh, yeah. Like that little crawl at the bottom of the screen saying Ohio State. All right, Derek. How long do these incidents go on or how long do you think they can go on without a coach becoming aware? I mean, you're an athlete, mm -hmm. baseball player, correct? Yes, sir. What position? Uh, pitcher. Well, looks like a pitcher. I got this picture loss. All right. So in the locker room, guys will talk. Mm -hmm. In the dorm, guys will talk. How long before that locker room banter the dorm room conversations, the hanging out with pals at the baseball house, you know, incidents. Uh, how long till that becomes common knowledge among the coaching staff, do you think? Uh, it needs to be uh, common knowledge among the coaching staff It'd be, if it becomes legal, a legal problem. So do you think that coaches are aware of what you guys do? Oh, most definitely. You do? Yes, sir. They know what y'all are up to when you're doing things illegal. They know that, too? Most of the time. Wow. <laughs> so if coaches know that there's illegal activity going on and do nothing about it, should they be liable? If they knew about it in a head and didn't say anything, they should be liable, yes. You think so? Yes, sir. All right, because they're the responsible adult, not because they're the party that committed it. So if you behave badly, the head baseball coach should be liable for your behavior? If he didn't say anything about it and covered it up and didn't bring it out. But what if his job is dependent on winning and you're his top athlete? Isn't he incentivized to cover up your bad behavior? I feel like he would want to, but it's not the right thing to do. All right, so he would be incentivized to cover up, but still not the right thing. Yes, sir. Okay, because, I mean, he can be fired for losing or he can be fired for covering up your bad behavior. I don't think I'd want to be a coach. Mm. I don't think I'd want to be a coach from all these. Coaching's a hard, hard ordeal. Yeah. Now, were there any incidents that you came up with? I mean, this just occurred to me, mm. and you may not know. Are there any incidents of women's athletics? being tainted by similar accusations? In saying accusations, no, because in all reality, it's mainly male athletes that are charged in these incidents. Well, clearly, I'm just wondering if anything happens with women's athletics. I mean, it doesn't even have to be of a sexual nature mm -hmm. or an abusive nature. It could be illicit drugs or doping or things like that. You just don't hear it mm -hmm. when it comes to women's athletics. Interesting. All right, so... All these accusations, I mean, the Art Browse disaster, mm -hmm. uh, this Urban Meyer conversation that we've had, uh, even all the way back to like the Duke lacrosse incident that I keep mm -hmm. coming back to where there was an entire team accused of uh, raping a, a woman and it turns out she'd made the whole thing up. Uh, do these high-profile incidents have any effect on the schools? Um. I mean, financially, no. All right, so this is based on, I mean, you're saying that financially, no. How do you know? Uh, so, I mean, financially, they wouldn't be affected because, I mean, everybody's going to keep feeding into the university alumni. They're so not, you they're can't not do stop. anything too heinous to ruin your reputation as a top athletic school. In this incident, no. All right, so let's say we have, you know, Dripwater State University, and they're a powerhouse football, basketball, mm -hmm. you know, soccer, baseball, rowing powerhouse. I don't want to leave any sports out. And they kidnap and murder a busload of nuns and orphans. 
Is that what it would take for these incidents to impact the university? Uh, that might be one. <laughs> because so far, I mean, in these incidents, no uh, school's really been hurt financially. Well, is that knowable? I mean, how would we know if they're hurt financially? And what does hurt financially look like? Because hurt financially at a D3 school, mm -hmm. like where we are, would be significantly different than hurt financially, say, at yeah. a school that has a one billion dollar athletic endowment mm -hmm. so i mean what does it take to hurt a school like that financially i mean i guess it would take something to the effect of uh i guess a yeah. financial meltdown like the destruction of an entire economy oh yeah i mean because those are big numbers yeah they've got so many alumni that feed into the university fascinating so essentially they get a pass in reality, in a way, yes. So is this just lurid drama made for TV? Yes, sir. So just just the creation of the media. It's not real. It's real, but the media uh, the media blows it up. I believe because it's lurid. Interesting. All right, so it's hard to say what the impact is over all mm -hmm. these incidents. Uh, and the NCAA does it have any sort of response? Uh, I mean, NCAA is kind of the reason that the universities take action. Because, uh, because they say, if you don't, we'll be extra ugly to you. Yeah, because if the, if the university doesn't take action, then the NCAA is going to take action, and that's going to be even worse. Well, I mean, I've seen you know the NCAA crack down on school for recruiting violations, mm -hmm. but I've never heard of them cracking down on a school because of one of these incidents. Mm -hmm. But then again, I'm not a sports enthusiast i don't follow this as closely as perhaps you do you know of any incidents where this has occurred uh not with uh accountability of coaches because when it comes to like sexual assault or domestic abuse the universities always seem to take action first as to where with the incident at smu with the recruitment violations everything you no know, the fabled death penalty from oh, generations yeah. ago that they're still living in the shadow of the university really didn't take action nca took action immediately okay so what about so uh, i guess in what you're saying is if university management doesn't handle their business ncaa will mm -hmm. so did the ncaa threaten baylor with anything over the art browse incident uh i mean they had a little say in it but the university is the one that really came into the effect and uh, uh accusing art browse and getting him out of there all right so the university administration said you gotta go they didn't say you got to go with their arm pinned up mm -hmm. behind their back by the NCAA. They, didn't they did wanna, it on they, their own. They didn't want to get into more of a deeper hole. All right. So they did it because it was the right thing to do. And mm -hmm. they're all God fearing, loving mm -hmm. administrators. I mean, they kind of had to. They they would kind of receive a bad reputation as they're one of the, they're the biggest Baptist school in the nation. Well, God bless Baylor University then. All right. We're going to take a break and then we're going to hear from some of our viewers. They've, thrown some questions at us and some pretty good ones too. We'll be right back. And good day everybody. Welcome to the professors from McMurray University in Abilene, Texas. I'm Paul Fabrizio. I'm Don Frazier and our special guest is my colleague and longtime friend Gary Shanafelt. And I'm Scott, the engineer. My older brother, Tim Frazier. John Samudio to my left. And we're joined in the studio today by Rob Frazier, an expert on cybersecurity. My mom was pregnant a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot. Dad was a checker player. She moved heat jumper. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. University of California, Berkeley, which, as we all know, uh, has a much better graduate program in history than they do a football team. <laughs> <laughs> You're still smarting over that, aren't you? Well, I, I wear my Cal Berkeley sweatshirt here, and the students all kind of think, why are you doing that? I said, well, it's because they've got a great graduate program. But yes. They don't realize that. And we're back, and now we're going to field some questions from our viewers. This one comes at Brandon Hopper Rachel. When did these, well, are these accusations mm -hmm. rising in number fed by a voracious media appetite for sports 
and lurid accusations. In the media's viewpoint, yes, because since the media has grown so much in the past few years, the accusations seem to rise in number, but in all reality, they're not. Okay, so it's really more of an effect of exposure, but not actual numbers of incidents. With the media exposure, it seems to be more, but in all reality, it's been, I mean, it's been steady. I mean, it's common. It always happens. It always happens, and it's not happening more or less now than it has in the past. I mean, it may be happening a little more because of today's time. It's just... What about today's time has anything to do with it? I mean, everybody thinks they can get away with so much more nowadays. <laughs> well, I think you can get away with less these days. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because it's, it's ubiquitous. I mm -hmm. mean, you're always on. I mean, we live in the land of YouTube and oh, yeah. pinch to face and everything else. So, any little slip all of a sudden brings you under scrutiny. Oh, yeah. Like doing a segment on a YouTube channel mm -hmm. for a freshman year project. All of a sudden, this lives out there. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. All right. So the next one comes us, comes to us from at the real Jimmy Martell. So at what point during these accusation processes should a coach suspend his athletes? And I'll add on to this, when should the coach be suspended? Under what circumstances mm -hmm. do you suspend athletes behaving badly? Under what circumstances do you suspend coaches covering up for athletes behaving badly? So we always hear about teams having team rules or they be suspended for team violations. Okay. If it becomes... So that's, that's a thing. I'm, again, mm -hmm. not a college athlete, so tell me about team rules. and. So, I mean, they say that there's contracts. It's just kind of like a verbal contract. Okay. That uh, we want to follow these guidelines and this is how we want to build our program. And I imagine they're written down somewhere, not oh, just yeah. verbal. Yeah. If yeah. they start violating, that's when that's the point when I think coaches should start suspending them. So the coaches should hammer them if they violate team rules. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with you know, laws, civ civic laws, criminal laws. Which, I mean, e even with legal disputes, they need to be suspended, for sure. Okay. So the team rules should be the first line of defense. Mm -hmm. So... This goes also for coaches covering them. You know, coaches allow the mm -hmm. team rules to be suspended. Should that coach get hammered for suspending team rules so that, you know, super-duper athlete A mm -hmm. isn't suspended? I mean, if he was involved in the incident, he should be suspended for sure. But if he's – are you saying, like, if he's suspending the athlete? What I'm saying is, you know, Derek, you're a good player, but you may not be the best player. Mm -hmm. So let's say best player gets recruited in from Dripwater State, and all of a sudden you're the second, you know, line pitcher, mm -hmm. and he's the first line pitcher. And you break team rules, and he breaks team rules, maybe even the same incident. Should the team rules be applied evenly, equally to the both of you? For sure. But he's a better player, and he's going to get more Ws. But we're all the same, and it should be applied equally. And you're a hard man. All right, so team rules, first line of defense, final mm -hmm. answer? Yes, sir. All right, good. This next question comes at us from Caleb Stonewall. You gave your opinion, mm -hmm. you gave your opinion, on the Urban Meyer incident. But do you believe Art Bryles was – Correctly terminated from Baylor? I mean, it was heard that he – it's speculated that he didn't know about it. But uh, with it, there, there's, there was actually 120 accusations filed against uh, football players. So it wasn't just over, this over, one. Over the course of, I'd say, I think it was like four or five years. Okay, so this was kind of a, a culture, mm -hmm. kind of a thing. This was kind of the one with Sam Ukawachi was kind of a big deal more because he was a transfer. Okay, so he was put more in the spotlight as he was a transfer because everybody knew who he was because he was transferring over. Okay, so that's why it became such of a big ordeal in but, the media. You know, Joe Smith and Al Johnson and all these guys mm -hmm. that you know weren't as high profile. They were doing the exact same stuff, just nobody put it out there. Oh yeah. So there was a culture here. Do you think Art Bryles knew about it? I mean, Art Bryles had to, with there being 120 of them, there's no way you don't know about it. 
especially with being the head coach of a football team. Well, either way, Art Riles is faced with a career-ending decision because mm-hmm. he can just suspend the whole team mm-hmm. and watch Baylor implode, or he can continue coaching hoping nobody notices. And if he gets caught, mm-hmm. the program implodes. Mm-hmm. Yikes. I don't think I'd want to have my professional reputation resting mm-hmm. on the likes of that. Anyhow, here's the next question. Uh, this comes from at there's money in the bank. Is this the first time in sports history, or at least in mm-hmm. recent memory that you know of, where a coach was the center of the problem? I, I guess we're talking about Ohio uh, State. the Ohio State mm-hmm. incident. Okay. So, I mean, uh, Zach Smith was the main center of the problem yeah, Ohio, this is at, not, in this incident. Yeah, not like Baylor where it's yeah, behavior. Yeah, players. Of a player. Yeah, yeah, this is all coaches. Okay. Exactly. Well, one of the first incidents that was really big in the media was the Penn State ordeal. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I forgot all about that. But that certainly applies to what we're talking about oh, here. Yeah. So that was probably, in, in my recollection, the first time that there was kind of a celebrity coach. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're really talking about is coaches as celebrities. Mm-hmm. And they're celebrities because they're good at what they do oh, yeah. and they bring a winning reputation to their schools where he was, um, well, uh, destroyed mm-hmm. for bad behavior. And the program was, too. And the, the, pro- program the program was, was down too. for uh, three or four years, yeah. I'd say. Right. Maybe more than that. Yeah, so this sort of celebrity coaching culture is kind of mm-hmm. an interesting. Wow. All right. So many facets and layers <laughs> oh, to yeah. this. All right. We've got uh, one more question. This is from at Mac Reiner. Does this only occur at large D1 celebrity coaching research institutions mm-hmm. like the Ohio State University, Penn State University, mm-hmm. Baylor University, or could it happen at the small schools? Oh, it could definitely happen in small schools. We just don't know about it because the media is so involved with the D1 and large universities that those always get brought out. Well, and there's also, a, I guess, an economy of scale. Mm-hmm. You know, 50,000 students versus 1,200 students. Oh, yeah. So I guess that makes it 50 times more visible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. This has been an interesting conversation, Derek. I appreciate you bringing it to uh, the show. Uh, that's all we have for now on this episode of Historical Trends. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks.